Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xiao Talk Show.、Uh, how are you guys? And today we are going to do a bunch of things, miscellaneous, Emacs Lisp, and keyboard, the Signum Three keyboard, and、uh, Emacs, and、uh, some programming issues, user interface, uh, uh, web development fuck up, and、uh, some math. Okay, any of these topics. Possibly, and、uh, you know, comments in the comment box, and、uh, I'll talk about it. And good morning, Troy Fletcher. So Troy Fletcher is the creator of this keyboard. And by the way, today is two thousand twenty-first, February seventeenth.、Uh, Troy is the creator of this keyboard,、uh, the Signum Three, and I have.、Uh, I'm going to show you. Okay, that's the one of the topic today. I'm going to show you this keyboard, fantastic keyboard with thumb paddles. <laughs>、uh, do we have people? Okay,、uh, we don't have people here now. Let's. I'm think so. I'm going to talk about、uh, Emacs. So let me show you the keyboard. Okay. I have quite a few keyboards to show you.、Uh, quite a few keyboards. So first of all, so let me show you the Signum Three keyboard. Okay, so I did I did a screw up. I was my sound is off. No audio. No audio is gone. So let me do it this again. Okay.、Uh, no audio. So I'm back. So let let, let me let me.、Uh, so hold on a second. Let me do this again. Fucking ed. Fucking idiotic technology. I have to finish that sentence. Okay. So let me try to fix the audio. Test, test. Do I have audio? Yes. So do I have audio? Okay. So so again, let me show you this one more time. This is Troy Fletcher, creator of this keyboard. This keyboard is called Sig Signum Three. Just search for search for it, and you'll find it. And、uh, one of the great feature is the. Actually, this.、Uh, let me do this instead. Okay. Let me do this.、Uh, let's see if、uh, idiotic. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. Okay, maybe like that. Okay, so I have to be careful. So, so this, so this is、uh, Signum Three. Okay, so this, this is a thumb paddle, 
uh, this is a normal key and you have two more keys on the side you can put a normal switch or you can use a thumb paddle and it works uh, really great I have red switches so this is uh, really great so for example oops uh, I just pressed the wrong I just pressed the key on my uh, ultimate hacking keyboard so that that is my ultimate hacking keyboard this is my kinesis new kinesis so um, so what do I want to say so I have I don't have it set up yet uh, and also did I mention he sent it to me so thank you Troy I don't have it set up yet but but, but let me tell you okay let me make a complaint the setting up is a pain in the in the ass <laughs> Troy I'm going to ask you questions how to how to set this up okay but the, but anyway the the major thing is about the flip switch it's fantastic you guys have questions about the uh, flip switch okay I think I'm back now let me just put this normal so I can actually uh, talk Okay, so that's so I was going I was thinking of doing this later, but you know, so this is the signum three uh, and It's fantastic. Now there's a major problem. You, you know, there's a major problem with this do-it-yourself keyboards because I'm excited about this keyboard and I'm about to you know, I want to set it up to uh, create a I want to create a keyboard configuration key map for my Emacs soft like keys but how do I do it? <laughs> That's a problem. You know, you go to the Signum Signum 3's website, so which is this website, then you go to uh, here's photos, and he here is how uh, he explains about the flip switch, and you go to his website about configuration. It's one bunch of incomprehensible things. <laughs> I, I'm not a maker you know the millennial generations maker I'm not and I'm not a keyboard you know creator so I I have little idea what these are so from but from what I can tell I got a uh, you know pro micro you know yesterday act actually I looked up you know what what's pro micro what the fuck is pro micro what what the fuck is t teensy so I looked up so I got pro micro and and so I have to supposedly First of all, I download this file, okay. Then I go to this website. Then, uh, okay. Then I need to turn on JavaScript. Uh, then I upload my file. Uh, oops. I upload my file. Then it it pops up a bunch of incomprehensible things. Let me show you, okay. So, for example, let's say that one. Oh, uh, wait. So that one looks nice. Leave page. Uh, wait. Uh, so let's see. Yeah. So basically, when I upload my file, I got something like that. Then you have pins. Like what? What the fuck? What do I have to do? Like what? Which one? What do I have to do? Which button to press? Then if I made a mistake, whoops! My keyboard is. <laughs> the firmware is fucked you know so so and where do I read the instructions there's not much you know on this side it says pro micro ping assignment okay you know so that's a problem that's a problem with all these uh, most of these do-it-yourself keyboards you know they don't give the creator a choice you know they they are nerds and they just satisfy themselves you know this and this is a great innovation but it everything stops there there's no case so if if I drop this it's dead you know if I drop it, it you know it's broken two hundred dollars three hundred dollars and uh, the USB connector is prone to break uh, you know that's a problem of do-it-yourself keyboards and many of them uh, in fact more than half of them is like that in particular in particular you know I also got this but <laughs> I have no t I, I you know I haven't done anything to it because I don't have my keys you know I, I the key is not set up in order to do that I have to spend few hours to read to to read about how do you compile the QMK you know software so that's uh, one of the major problem with this uh, do-it-yourself 
uh, and, and and also case is important. Okay, let me mention the case is important. Yeah, need a case. But anyway, so anyway, I I'm going, just going to use this for myself, and so uh, so it work for myself, you know. But you know, you, you won't have lots of bias. That's one of the key. So we, you know, if I make a, can make a suggestion to you, do it yourself. People selling keyboards out there. You want to create a package so that everything is in one box, okay? Case everything assembled. You know, sell it for three hundred dollars or three fifty if you have to. You know, make this, then you get sales. Okay, so uh, what what? So let's see what else. Hello, Zitron Crazy. Haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> Okay, so that's about keyboard. Any questions? Uh, and Troy, anything to say? Do you, uh, how's it going? So, any any feedback you have about the your keyboard? Okay, that's that's the um, that's the Signum keyboard I want to show. Okay, so the the most important thing is the thumb paddle. It's fantastic. I'm not doing so great. So the thumb paddle is fantastic. <laughs> I'm not showing you much here. Anyway, so that's about keyboard. Let's see what's the next thing we want to talk about. Any um, okay keyboard? Then what else? Okay, so let's go back to Emacs. Um, what are we going to do today? So. I next we can talk about Emacs and programming or mathematics. Uh, greetings, Bot. So Emacs programming and math. Now since Bot is here, let's talk about some math because uh, Bot is tired of Emacs. So let's talk some uh, math first. Let me show you some math. Okay. So we have, so I have, so let me, first of all, let me tell you about calculators. So I got this, uh, you know, I'm a nerd, so I'm into calculators. I got this calculator for five, for $250 uh, in 1991. So 20 years ago, I bought this one, you know, and this is the first graphing calculator. And uh, that's before I know anything about programming languages. I programmed eight Queen's Puzzle solution. Uh, and also a program to play music chords. So, so this is uh, HP twenty eight. But today, I want to tell you is that um, I also got this one Casio. Okay, this is this is a ch cheap uh, calculator. On so nothing nothing special about that. It's just a cheap calculator. Then. You know, calculator is amazing. Amazing thing. Imagine you showing these calculators, handheld calculators, <coughs> to mathematicians two hundred years ago. Got, you know, greatest mathematicians, Gauss, Newton, <laughs> and uh, see what they think. You know, the, those people, Leibniz, they are trying to create calculators, and then you show this, uh, uh, which, uh, uh. You know th these these things fantastic. So anyway, I want to tell you. So if you are buying a calculator, you know the most f popular is T I N Inspire Texas Instruments. Now that's not so good. Uh, the better one is H P Prime. Okay, so you know it's cheaper and better and faster because there's video reviews of it. That's all I want to show. And also, even if you buy a Casio, that's even better. More powerful and cheaper Casio, so you can either buy that one or I, I guess this one. This is an old model. Okay, that's something about calculators. See comments? No comments. Okay, so let's see. Let me talk about next thing. Uh, keep watching. Test. Okay. Calculators. So I have. So so. So there are some fantastic math software here. I'm going to show you a few. You can just uh, search my website, great software for uh, 2D visualization of geometry. So this one is 
plotting complex uh, functions. No, it's called domain coloring. And uh, there are several of them. There's a uh, Klein Quartic, okay. And most of these uh, these are in JavaScript, so it's interactive. So let me show some of that. Let's open. Let's open. Okay, let's open. These are beautiful, you know. The, and, and here is one uh, for doing the Euclidean geometry. Let's open. So let's show that. Let's see, I need to turn on JavaScript. There it is, you see? Let's see, next, next. And one more. So this one is for doing the Euclidean geometry. Uh, you can actually draw lines or, or circle. Let's see how it works. Oh, you can draw a circle. So you can measure distance and so that. Non-Euclidean geometry, okay, that's one of the big branch of geometry. Hyperbolic geometry and uh, elliptic geometry. But this one, they focus on hyperbolic, I think, yeah. Uh, if you don't know what they are, you can just look up Wikipedia, but it will take you some time to learn because, you know, usually it's taught in a course. Uh, for math majors after after you had calculus. Uh, so that's that. Then there is this one. This one is showing, oh yeah, there's more, a lot more math application, math programs, okay? So for example, this one, let me show you uh, z squared. Can we do that? There it is. How do you Uh, there it is. Uh, oops, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want the Earth picture. Okay, that's better. Divided by Z. Uh, divided by z plus 1. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, how do you how do you make this full screen? Oh, here. Okay, so that's uh, that's the interesting thing about this application. And then, then there is this one. Let's change, you can change function. Uh, okay. Then this one, Klein's Quartic. What happened? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's fun. That's fun mathematics. This is also hyperbolic geometry. I haven't studied it, but you can. Okay, and what's this one? So this one
Oh yeah, this this guy is amazing guy. This guy, uh, he's a programmer and mathematician. I think R Rick Rus Russell. He uh, he wrote quite a few JavaScript applications. For example, look at this one. And uh, it's you know it's all interactive, of, co of course. And this one is also interactive. You can, oops, uh, yeah, I screwed up. Okay, so you can see you can play with it. Math, that's fantastic math. You see. Okay, so let's close that. Close, 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 close. And let me show you, okay? So actually, so we have a few. So all these applications are software for 2D visualization of geometry. Now let me show you 3D visualization of geometry. There are a few fantastic applications. So open this one and uh, Open this one, okay. Then let's see this one. Okay, hey, great break the loop, and hey, Nimenshiko. Uh, Nimenshiko says Casio MP12R is the best calculator for common people you can calculate quotient and rem remainder on it okay <laughs> Casio MP12R so make a note of it creepy smile is bad okay so let me show you okay so let me finish showing this then we're gonna uh, I'm gonna read comments so this this one is a great theory in geometry by uh, and and this guy Rick uh, Russell made a visualization of it okay this is a very famous problem for like 20 years i don't really uh, understand it but but visually everyone can understand it okay so let me show you what what this is this is sphere eversion okay so basically mathematicians has a theory that says a sphere can be inverted inside out that is you can turn the sphere inside out without without any any pinch or tear so so that's a theory in mathematics now remember the key thing is that you cannot have any pinch you know for example if you have a I, I, I don't have anything to illustrate with anyway if you go to this side here you read it and you hear expand explain it sphere e eversion okay I think it's called sphere eversion but anyway the, the the theory is that a sphere can be turned turned inside out without any uh, cringe or kink you know so in other words a sphere can be smoothly turned inside out and and it's allowed for uh, things to go through itself but what is not allowed is any pinch or cringe you know uh, sharp points so that's a theory but you know it's difficult to uh, visualize so he is showing a version of it so you can see start with a sphere then you turn it this way and that way and that way and so on then this way then this way then it's inside out so and he is I believe he's the first one who actually made a visualization that's easy to understand you know if you watch it carefully you can understand it then he also you know he has explanations and he also shows uh, you know he shows you details for example look at this one so first of all you have a sphere then you imagine you cut it up so he, he cut it up so that you can see exactly how it is done so you can go on go on go on go on and you have that and you do this 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 
Okay, so here is an example where you have a cringe, you know, that's not allowed. So if you do it this way, it won't work. But anyway, so he's showing different ways. <laughs> so, so you can turn a sphere inside out. Let's see. Right now it's orange on the outside and blue on the inside. So let's go back. Now it's blue on the outside. So you can do this slowly, you know, so you can see the details. Let's see, let, let me do it slowly. So slowly, 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 slowly. Okay, this is no go. But, but if you, okay, don't do that. Then if you twist it a little bit, then, then do it that way, that way. Okay. Anyway, I don't understand. Okay, and he's got other versions. Uh. Anyway, that's the uh, that's about sphere eversion. Okay. Uh, big theory, <laughs> big theory in math. So you can look up differential geometry. Okay. You know, all this visualization is fun, you know, so I, 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 I've been, you know, I read about this like uh, almost 30 years ago. But the thing is, you know, so I failed in knowing a lot math because I never actually under, you know, try to study it. So what do you want to do? So, you know, you watch this, it's fun. But what you really want to do is start to uh, take a course, for example, in differential geometry and really, you know, do the math, not just visualization. Okay, and here, here is another one. This one is doing... Uh, quaternions are a four-dimensional number system, meaning each individual quaternion... This guy is fantastic. You know, he's a, he's a mathematician and also a programmer, and he shows you quaternions here. You probably have seen his video. So uh, he... It consists of four real number parts. Here is a uh, video plus interactive application uh, that explains quaternion. Okay, that's that's it about that. So you can find all this on my website. So you just go to Xali Math. You go to um, Xali Math and uh, Math Software. So you can find all these fantastic software. Uh, I've showed some interesting things, um, and Mathematica is the greatest of them all, okay? La uh, in my last video, I talked about Mathematica, how you can get it free, so you should uh, go get it. Uh, and there's some interesting things about puzzles. Um, let's see. Okay, I think that's that's it for uh, math. Let, let me read the comments. I was on the phone, so I didn't hear you reply. Have you ever uh, tried pink switches? Uh, no, pink switches, no. I don't even know which one are the pink switches. Fuzzing. So Sid Addy says, Hi, Xar, greetings. Interesting uh, keyboard, the Signum, very similar to the Atrius. Uh, now keyboard ID IO. Now okay, I don't like Atrius, uh, and yeah, <laughs> I have some complaints to make about keyboard IO, keyboard IO, and and Atrius. You know, keyboard keyboard IO, keyboard IO is a very interesting keyboard. Uh, let me show you key keyboard IO. Uh, let's go to keyboards. Do it yourself, keyboards. Uh, actually, keyboard deal is now in history, ergo history, because they they, they no longer makes it. So when keyboard deal uh, began, I was very excited. You know, it's it's great design. It's, uh, and also it's got one of the innovation of the palm key. You, you see that 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 is a uh, innovation because you have never seen it before. You know, uh, and. Uh, but then, you know, he, 
the style of the keyboard went into the elite direction you know meaning that it's the highest quality you know it's made of wood uh, you know some expensive wood or something and everything becomes kind of elaborate you know I rather prefer uh, you know common practical ones but everything becomes e elaborate <coughs> And now, after the first version, they don't. I, I guess. I, I guess they don't. You know, they don't make this anymore. So, um, you know, I rather prefer it just become part of a, a model you can always buy. You know, so they. So you know, they. They tends to be. They. they it turns out they geared to. You know, elite. You know, kind of become a elite thing. Then. Then it turns out, you know, the next version they did is the Atreus, you know, which is the most idiotic uh, among the choices, in my in my opinion, the Atreus keyboard, which is where uh, Atreus here somewhere uh, flat one piece Atreus, yeah. So Atreus is made by this guy, a great Emac Lisp coder, and also a Crozier coder, and also and also other things. Uh, but it's not so good. Okay, first of all, it's got only forty-two keys. I hate that. I hate those uh, only forty-two keys. That means it's impossible if you are going to type lots of mathematics, or if you type Chinese, Russian, Japanese, this keyboard is use, you know, useless. It becomes useless. Unless you get the variation, you know, with 58 or 62 keys. Uh, okay, so let me see some more comments. Uh, HP Prime Calculator because I prefer having the physical keys of a real calculator. Okay, that's break the loop. Uh, creepy smile is from bot. <laughs> uh, Just a pain, yes, compared to, yeah. So, Break the Loop is talking about using the phone, using the phone as calculator. Ben Eater, the creator of the educational breadboard video, created a computer from scratch, creating a computer from scratch, and that quaternion visualization that Xar showed. Oh, Ben Eater, that's his name. I'm getting a new Ultimate Hacking Keyboard version 2 plan to use negative tiling. Do you use any of the modules on your uh, Ultimate Hacking Keyboard? No, I don't have... Um, so the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, I don't have the extra module. You know, the one I have is version 1. Now they have version 2. And, uh, you know, I... D I maybe you know, I can ask them for, uh, to ask them to send me a module so I can <laughs> review and sell it for them, maybe. Okay, so right, so what next? How long have I been talking? I I I been talking for thirty five minutes. So shall we do some Emacs Lisp? Uh, I want to do some Emacs Lisp, I guess. So Emacs Lisp. Okay, so a lot has been happening with Emacs Lisp. Let me do a rant first. Okay, so recently I ran into this problem, this uh, nasty web, you know, web programming web dev problem. So basically, I decided I want, you know, when you click a link, I wanted to pop up a window, you know, because. I you know I realize for example click a link you know you can go back uh, actually this stupid windows let me maximize window instead uh, not this one maximize window so I decided to make the link to open in a new tab instead so like that 
I open it, you open a new tab. So the way you do that is to uh, add a blank, add a target blank to all your links. But it turns out there is a problem with target blank because it turns out if you use target blank then then the other website that the target goes to can use JavaScript to reload your form page, reload your page to some other page like a fake bank page. So basically in summary whenever you add target blank you have to add you should also add re uh, rel equals to no opener because otherwise hackers on the other side can you know can hack you know can can create a phishing site so that that's a problem that's a giant pain from the web dev you know th these people these tech geekers these nerds that every day they tell you what to do they tell you what is the best idioms and so on this java typically from you know it, you know these hacker types people on hacker news or from python people python, you know they tell you what to do this so they created this situation so that's a problem so that's one of the complexity and tedium of software engineering because for me to do this, I have 6,000, 47,000 links from my website, links to other sites. So, you know, it takes me only three seconds to change the, all, the, all my links. But however, but then, a, you know, a friend who told me there's this problem. Then I started to read about pro the problem, it, which takes another, another half an hour. Then I started, started to fix it. You know, it's not a simple find and replace because then you run into other issues. You have to make lots of other decisions on the way. So this is a story about about one of the tediums of uh, software tediums and complexities of software engineering. <laughs> okay, and I have a collection of it over the past twenty years. I usually I try to write it down whenever I run into uh, lots of problems. You know, I document, you know, the software industry, uh, lots of problems. For example, Crozier's got Lenagon crap. Lenagon is like NPM, you know, NPM for JavaScript is Lenagon for Crozier. Uh, you know, you do one thing, you know, one thing leads to another, you know, so you have Java, you know, the Java, the inflexible Java programming language. Then someone thought, oh, why don't we write a, you know, a command line that automate everything. Then you have, you know, then, you know, then you have the NPM or Lenagon. Then it becomes more complex. Then you have init files, configurations, then you, you know, that's the software industry, you know, at, on on each one of the step it seems to be an improvement you know why not you know why not have a command line Lenagon it just uh, automate everything but but then it Lenagon by itself takes several hours and days to learn it in the same way this happened to a uh, github you know git you know in the beginning why don't we create you know a versioning control that will improve our lives you know code so you have a vir version control so you can yeah that's better that's good then then eventually after you know several generations then today we have git then it's one complexity fuck git where is git yeah so i have a tutorial that just shows you the basics but uh, git is one of the most complex shit then then you have the commit messages oh my god so you know it becomes a complexity by itself can all this be avoided yes actually actually i think so you know most of it most of the complexity you know most of the complexity come come from the c and unix fox okay they are the they are the mother of almost everything that's wrong in computing industry now there's a reason you know why things uh, why things um 
happen that way because mostly social reasons. But anyway, so what I want to say is, can, so can all this problem be avoided? I, you know, yes, in theory, because if you stop thinking from a, um, uh, how, how should I say, explain this? If you design things and uh, if you basically if you stop hacking okay you stop any solution that's hacking then almost all this problem will not be created uh, that's part of the reason the other part of the reason for all these complexities is due to uh, the way society and software are sold you know social reasons you know tech companies uh, corruption in tech companies competition and uh, lie and for example agile you know agile you know that's one of the extreme complexity that created extreme fucking bullshit lies in software industry agile so why did they why did why why did agile and all extreme programming become more and more i mean very popular well that's because money you know all these uh little companies they create agile they 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 tell you that they can help your corporation save money and so on money so they you know they you have to pay them so you know corrupt companies and corporations and software industry and and uh, and including open source in fact lots of it including open source because if it, you know for example in linux we have extreme complexity linux is the worst uh, desktop system okay the worst desktop system compared to uh, windows or mac but why is it around and why it, why does it persist and why why does the Linux fuck up persist? You know, like Linux creates fuck up every day. You know, GNOME, KDE, and every, you know, the, it continues on and on. So why does it persist? Part of the reason is not because, you know, the open, you know, because the open source fanatism. Again, it's a social reason. You know, the open source fanatism because many of these people they believe they are doing good for society you know they they deeply believe they are doing moral uh, you know they are morally superior so they they if you believe something that's fine you do it yourself but the thing with fanatism fanatic fanatics is that they want to other they you know they push to have their they force their opinion on other people for example git you know git or emacs or you know vim or haskell you you hear people so you should use this you know this technology because it's so great you you really should that use this technology because it's open source you know for example when i was using mac or right now i'm on windows lots of my my viewers will say why, why are you using a mac why are you using a windows <laughs> you know they all want you to use linux why because they have uh, open source fanatism you know they think they are doing good but in fact they they created a uh, great wrong in society this is how like some this is you know uh, this is getting into politics this is what I think you know why there are some great atrocities in the world that happens in the world you know a million people dead why does it happen because everyone you know wants to be a good person right every nobody wants to support the evil bad guys but why does it happen it happens because when you are the bad guy you don't know it you think you are doing the good thing and you want to spread it that's why it happens often often uh, okay, so that's about, you know, so agile, so complexities of software industry. So I, I think maybe that's it for today. What else? What's wrong with agile in your opinion? Well, agile is just a bunch of bullshit, you know, because so what's wrong with agile? Agile, uh, let me explain. Okay, so, uh, you know, so I have a collection of articles about agile, okay? Uh, voodoo's of software engineering. The the first you know. A, so what is agile? What why I, I what's wrong with it? It's a code. Okay, if you study codes, you know you can use you know for example even if you go to Wikipedia, you can find uh, certain characteristics of code or different codes share. You know there are you know there's no exact definition of code. 
but usually they share certain uh, characteristics. For example, usually cults have one leader, like one dictatorship kind of leader. And uh, usually all the members of the cult admire him. You know, you, you, you very much admire one guy, you know, things like that. Then cult has a brainwashing, several brainwashing te techniques. For example, controlling about food. In, this includes religion. For example, in religion, Christianity or Islam, they tell you what you can or cannot eat. And when you eat, you have to pray. So in, in, in a sense, they are controlling, you know, when, because food is the most fundamental thing for survival food eating you know you have to eat so codes you know they always have something to do with food because they associate with food you know like you can some things you cannot eat for example pigs or or, or uh, ox or you know depending on what uh, uh, religion and then you have prayers before food that means every time you eat if you don't eat you're gonna die but every time you eat you have to by the law of the code, you have to think about a code. You know, you have to thank someone. <laughs> a code, you know, whatever the code says, you have to, you know, do that. So, controlling food. So anyway, so back to codes. So there are some characteristics, and uh, and many of these characteristics, if you look at agile, they is is somewhat similar. They share many of these uh, things. Okay. Uh, codes okay for okay maybe I'm getting too far so let me let me let me uh, take it from another perspective so why do I what 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 why do I think agile is very bad if you look at agile you you see what they say mostly are uh, kind of these you know large you know no non science okay non science bullshit basically you know agile they never tell you for example those who push for agile or extreme programming? They never tell you that. Okay, if you want to write a uh, good software, you need to study a lot math. You need to practice a lot coding. You need to understand things in detail. You need to, uh, you know, be a better, you know, read a lot more about, you know, programming. Understand the programming language well. You know, all these are quali uh, qualities to uh, write a great software, but agile is not like that. <laughs> They tell you something else. Usually, it's about you know some mystical. For example, if you want to lose weight, there are lots of you know uh, crafts that tells you about losing weight. But the most fundamental uh, way to lose weight, you know, just stop eating. Okay, stop eating so much and stop eating junk food and go exercise. That's the eternal. That's a very basic eternal way to lose weight. But people don't want to hear that. Oh my God! I have to. Stay. No, I. I want keep eating. I want to keep eating junk food. I want to drink Pepsi every day. I want. I want this that. But but I want to lose weight without you know. Uh, and I don't want to exercise. So you know you have all this uh, diet, this and that crap. In the same way with the uh, uh, extreme programming. Okay. So you want great software. What does that mean? You know get great programmers programmers you know study programming study languages master it master everything you know read documentation write good documentation and so on so agile but you know so agile doesn't talk about none of that it doesn't talk about math how programmer programmers should know math so instead you have this kind of like uh you know the loose loose weight thing you know so uh so you have you know look at look at this you know can you tell me you don't feel like this is some kind of coat diagram, some some new age? So uh, they they you know agile always have this kind of thing, you know this graph. So pair programming seconds code, pair programming and minutes unit test, hours pair negotiation, <laughs> and stand up meeting and acceptance test, you know days then iteration plan and you know they, all this crap. That's the nature of agile, you know. So one of the characteristics, you know, they have jargons. They always have like almost incomprehensible and hard to define jargons, you know, that agile's concept. Okay, so that's that. And uh, there are some new terms from the millennial generation. 
you know, one of them I discovered a few months ago is mechanical sympathy. <laughs> mechanical sympathy, a new jargon. I forgot what it is. Let's read about it. In programming community, a new fad is born, mechanical sympathy. The term mechanical sympathy was coined by racing by oh there it is racing driver Jackie Stewart and applied to software by Martin Thompson fuck face a scum who who is this Jackie Stewart said you don't have to be an engineer to be a racing driver racing driver but you have to have good mechanical sympathy he meant that understanding how a car works makes you a better driver okay this is just as true for writing code you don't need to be a hardware engineer, but you do need to understand how the hardware works and take that into consideration when you design software. <laughs> Does that doesn't that sound true? That sounds so simple and true, but it's a crap. It's a complete garbage. Okay, so he is saying this. So so this mechanical engine, mechanical sympathy, it's a jargon. What does it mean? It, it it means that to be a good you know good software programmer, you really need to understand some aspect of hardware. Yeah, on the surface it seems true, but not when you put into you know when you try to make a code out of it. When you have a jargon, you know mechanical sympathy for it. Why? Because I mean, you know in fact I can statistically speaking, if you look at all the great programmers, okay, I can tell you right away. A lot of them, or even more majority of the greatest programmers, don't know a fuck about how hardware works. Okay, so it's actually not necessary even to uh to be a great programmer. You know, and it's not necessary to actually know uh, even a bit of hardware. And that is mathematically true as well. Because why do I have to know hardware? How how why why do I have to know how CPU is designed. Why do I have to know how memory is designed? Suppose, you know, d depends on what programming you do. Let's say you are a Java programmer, Java, or let's say you, if you are a JavaScript web dev programmer. You know, if you want to be a great web dev programmer, master JavaScript, master, uh, uh, you know, one of the million uh, frameworks, React, you know, Angular, you can, you know, a lot of people master them master css master html you know read their spec know them full well you know css html javascript you know you know this well and you will be the great a great you know one of the greatest javascript programmer you don't even know what the fuck is a cpu so apply that to this you know he's also this mechanical sympathy say oh to be a great programmer you have to know cpu no no you don't have to know hardware what the fuck is this so this so this is an example. I I I suppose it illustrates one of the, you know, fake news. You know, fake theories. You know, they they sell these things to idiotic programmers. You know, for for example, if you are a beginner, you know, you heard that programming can make a lot of money. Program pro programming is the future. Then you study programming and you read. You know, then you read hacker news. Then you run into oh mechanical sympathy. Oh my God. Oh, I need to understand CPU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you need to understand, but that's that. This is bullshit. Okay. Yeah, of course. If you are a programmer, of course, knowing hardware will help your career. Will help you know it 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 benefits you in general. But it doesn't make sense to single that out because, on the other hand, knowing math will also benefit you a lot. In fact, knowing mathematics in general benefit you much more than knowing than this mechanical sympathy fuck. Okay, so in software industry we have this kind of people, you know, so this, so I, I guess thank you for asking the question, you know, about agile because agile is an old thing, you know, we a lot of people talk you know, it's been talked to death. But this mechanical sympathy is a new thing. So I I hope I illustrate what's going on there. You know, so in software industry, software industry is uh, full of um, crap. You know, it's uh, social issues and uh, fake news, and you know, full of um, you know, full of uh, fake, false things. 
Okay, so that's it for today, 56 seconds. Uh, by the way, I noticed when I started this video, Stephen Wolfram is live. So I was going, you know, I was watching it. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to watch it. You know, you know, he was talking about, you know, I, I saw I saw for a few minutes so he was talking about actually related to our topic he's talking about you know a uh, well-oiled company and innovation I, I you know I didn't read I didn't watch the whole thing I only saw a few minutes but it seems like he's talking about why or the situation about innovation you know how giant corporations usually stop innovation for example Google when Google was smaller in the first 10 years of Google, Google is one of the great innovators. You know, Google created ethical ads. They basically, Google removed all the, you know, spammy ads in a web, from the web industry. That's the beginning of Google. That's why it become, Google become very successful. You know, and, and lots of Google, Google did great innovation to the web. You know, that's well, partly because that's Google's business to to make people use web instead of making people using desktop applications like you know Microsoft Windows so Google want people to use web so Google have put tremendous money and time to innovate to to advance JavaScript to advance web standards you know so so compared to 10 years ago oh uh, you, you know web programming is much more simpler because before every browser is different you know then there's no standard and you know you have to test everything so Google did great uh, a great amount of innovation. You know, Gmail is also innovation because before G before webmail, you know, email application you run on desktop. So and also Google uh, Google documentation, Google Docs, uh, you know, and lots of things, Google News. But but then Google today is so big. You know, today's Google software, you know, most of it is crap. It's and it's not just crap. It's also uh, unethical, you know. You, you know, Google become the worst evil empire in the universe. So I heard, you know, I think uh, Stephen Wolfram is talking about some something about innovation and giant corporations. How how they relate, or how do you prevent from being big corporations and not being innovative? You know, I think it's. Uh, great to watch so I'm so he also I think he also talked about his own company uh, it's very interesting because you know Wufan research you know it's been over 30 years Wufan research and Wufan research is a private company not public you know he could have sold it like 20 years ago for millions of dollars and be done with it <laughs> but you know what happens when you become public basically the just like Google, the product you know it becomes crap. It becomes political. It becomes you know it just become crap. So he, as far as I know, you know he, you know he he he's a guy with vision. So he tightly control. He want, you know, his company to go in this you know direction. Tightly control it. Uh, he doesn't want to just you know like oh sell it and become he's already rich but possibly he can be much more you know much more uh, uh, have a lot more money if you if he uh, you know open up the company but he choose not to as far as I know something like that so that's very interesting The process of writing good software does not mean jamming every customer feature in as soon as possible. That is true. Uh, so, so I think that's it for today. So thank you, Troy, for this fantastic keyboard, Signum Three, and Troy. So I want to ask you questions about how do you actually program it? Because you know, so you're gonna help me out. So I, I I'm going to make Safly keys key map for this. And gonna this you know use this for Emacs. Uh, leaky abstractions, okay. Uh, but on the core principle of agile sound, no. The <laughs> so Mark says, but on, but on the core principles of agile sound, no. Like the idea that 
getting feedback frequently is a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing about these culty things. So is, is you know, for example, if you are, uh, you know, if you do software, so is is getting a lot of feedback good? Yeah, of course it's good. I mean, you know, this, you know, so so what? So what? So why do you need agile? Yeah, getting feedback frequently is a good thing. So what is agile saying? So uh, other people are not doing it. So instead, you know, agile wants to create a jargon and code. You know they all sounds nice. That's a that's a problem with these codes. Uh, so hello, what other better alternative to agile do you think we have? You don't need you know you don't need agile. You don't need you don't need alternative. Well, like that. What in the in the first place? What what do you want to do? You, you know software engineering you want to write a software just write it okay when you write a software if you are not familiar with the programming language learn more about the programming language do more practice in coding if you don't know about the area uh, for example e-commerce e for example or chemistry if you are writing a software to, for doing uh, chemistry or doing math then study more math okay if you are too lazy you know, you don't feel like uh, writing software, then maybe you should get out of the business, you know, <laughs> or, you know, try to be more disciplined, you know, do more software. Uh, if So what is the problem you're trying to solve? So, at, you know, so if you have, you know, uh, if you have, you know, programmers that doesn't do much and blame others, fire the guy, okay? Fire the guy, because he's not doing work. Oh, uh, what, you know, so, if you want, if you your software becomes huge and complex, then maybe you got problem in communication in your department or something. You know, you know depending on what software you're talking about, how what's the team size, how complex are you? Are you are you talking about software for sending people to the moon, or are you talking about software like Facebook, or are you talking about you know one one single person software, or, or you know so. If you got a problem, solve it. You know why? Why do you need a special coty? You know, some some way, something something agile. <laughs> what is the problem? Like so, what? So what I'm saying is that you don't. It's you don't need any of it entirely. You know, the the thing about this code is that they get you to think in their way. That so so every time you mention, including religion, okay. So when you talk about religion, you know, for example, the first thing, you know, Western religion, I'm talking, okay, first Western religion, so you have the concept of God. So first of all, you have to debate whether God exists, whether God or exists or not, you have to debate it on and on, you know, <laughs> what the fuck does it matter? You don't even have to think about that. You don't like before this. You don't even know there is such a thing. You don't think about it. That's not a thing you have to think about. You got a problem in life, you solve it. Okay, you're gonna die. Yes, you're gonna die. Okay, uh, maybe in the future, science, you know, uh, you can make you can live forever. Maybe so that's uh, thing. Okay, that's that's uh, that's the thing about this agile thing. Agile is systematized common sense. No, it's not that at all. <laughs> oh my God! I got, I got I have to fight agile. You see how harmful it became. You know so so that's the thing about agile. You know it became deeply integrated into each common people's mind. So so Camille is saying agile is systemized common sense. So let me give you a comparison to, to to see that is not true. So Buddhism, okay? Let's talk about Buddhism because you probably don't know much about Buddhism. Well, maybe you do, a uh, cameo, but most Western people don't know uh, compared to Asian people because we live it, you know, it's in our daily life every day. So 
Buddhism. So let me just say Buddhism is a system systemized common sense. Do you agree? You are not likely to agree because if you are a Western, you know, white people, you live under Christianity or Eastern, you know, mostly Christianity, you wouldn't think, what the hell? See, Buddhism is systemized common sense. No, I have been living all my life without, you know, knowing a shit about Buddhism, but I have plenty of common sense. So it doesn't make sense. To say Buddhism is like system systematized common sense, but to an Asian, especially those who believe Buddhism, that that seems true. Yeah, yeah, of course, Buddhism is a systemized common sense. It makes us to do a greater good for the humanity. So you see, so you see how that sways your thinking. So, for someone who have never heard of agile, for example, before agile begin. You know, that's 20 years ago, okay, before this extreme programming, pair programming shit begin. 20 years ago, you know, before Agile was born, nobody know what the fuck is Agile. You do have common sense among programmers? Yeah, of course. And you can, you, does great software get created? Yes. In fact, probably more so than today. Uh, so are you saying, why, so why do you need Agile? So, so, what, <laughs> so what does, where, where does that come from? Okay, that's it for today. I think that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I think that's it for today. Okay, so... I want to show... Uh, Signum keyboard. I want to show... Okay, that, well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Bye, guys.